Welcome church. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. It's very weird to not have special music. I don't know what happened there. It's a, but the offertory music was beautiful. That was special music. That was special. It was special. But I don't know if I was going to classify it as special music. Anyhow. Welcome again, and I want to say that the sermon title, The Way to Win. What do we want to win here? Eternal Life. Eternal Life. That's a good idea. Eternal Life. If I had a subtitle, it may go something like Complete Surrender, Utter Victory. Maybe indomitable. The scripture today, 2 Corinthians, let's read it again. 2 Corinthians. Ten five. Casting down imaginations. Or some Bibles may say reasonings. Right? And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So what I want to talk about today is keys and tools for success. And what is real success? <laughs> Fulfilling our purpose, right? And what is our purpose? What did God create man for? I've asked you guys this before. You know. We were created as sanctuaries. God wants to dwell in us. Not just with us, but in us. Right? That's real victory. That's, that's, what, we're, that's what we're looking for. So if we have every thought kept captive to the obedience of Christ, isn't that the way Christ was? Amen. So that's the way we need to be, huh? So how do we get there? Death to self? Amen. Right? It's very difficult to do, though, sometimes, isn't it? Let's turn to uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6. Y'all there? All right, we're going to begin in verse 16, okay? 16, Proverbs 6 and 16. These six things does the Lord hate. Seven are an abomination unto him. First of all, it starts with a proud look. A proud look. And I want to say that yesterday, very yesterday, I was guilty of this. Um, my dear brother Ricky has been working on a tree for a couple days that we had to move um, yesterday. And uh, I mean, digging and digging and digging this huge palm tree. And there were some challenges. There was some water line, the main water line that goes into the house, run right through the root ball of this massive tree. So we, were, we had a, a guy come, and he's working on this thing with a machine that's just like probably 3,000 pounds light to do this job. And... Uh, Good old dad in his day, he, he loved a challenge like something that wasn't big enough to handle the job. But we finally got it done. Anyways, we have this massive tree teetering on some uh, pallets to try to get things because we couldn't get it to where we needed to go. So there's a guy down the road and he hears all this cracking because the pallets were cracking, you know. And he comes up and he just, I don't know, he looked like Albert Einstein the way he looked at me. 
And he comes in there and he says, what are you guys breaking? And right away, I mean, we're already having a rough time, so I don't like this guy. Okay? <laughs> I'm just going to tell you the truth. I didn't like him. <laughs> and then he sits there and he says, well, what is that, a gas line run through there? I says, no, dude. I says, you live here, right? There's no gas in this place. That's water. So I had a bad attitude, right? That's terrible. I shouldn't act that way. I felt heavily convicted afterwards. Anyways, um, he realized, I think, that he was being a little forward, so he kind of toned it down a little bit, and I settled down. But it was, uh, you know, I should be above that, right? If my, if my mind was captivated by Christ and, and he was controlling my thoughts, I would have reacted that way. Because how can a dead man be offended? Right? What does it matter? Who cares? So the guy doesn't look like I think he should look, and he doesn't act like I think he should act. Probably some people won't like this shirt, but I kind of like it. Okay? The proud look. It's a dangerous thing, and God hates it. Look at that. I mean, what is the first sin? Pride, right? Is that not proud? Somebody coveted Jesus' position, thought they should be him, hated his own creator? Brothers and sisters, this is the problem that we have, all of us. Amen. All of us. We have to be very careful here. And the answer was in... Our scripture verse. Anyways, I'm going to continue. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to run into mischief. Have we got mischief in this world today? Man, I, I was just, just picked my phone up this morning. I, I heard something about... 90 people, more than 90 people in a home yeah. in Houston, the sheriff was speaking. Can you imagine 90 people? More than 90 people stuffed into one home? That's more than we're here. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, the connotations of all that, I don't even want to go there. But anyways, it, it, it's, we have problems in this world. Lots of problems. Jesus is the only answer. Amen. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We don't need any of that here, no. do we? I would, we're trying to have these meetings and introduce people to Jesus Christ and show them that the times we're living in and, you know, not to believe the devil. That there's all kinds of time. There is no time. Amen. We're not promised the next five minutes. We have no idea. There's no time for discord among the brethren. You gotta love one another. Amen. Be willing to forgive. Amen. I was a fool yesterday. I'm admitting to you guys I was an idiot. That was stupid. How foolish. I had a moment because I, I was frustrated. Here we are, the Sabbath's coming on, we're still messing with this tree, I'm worried about it, I'm like, you know, we're not going to get this thing done in time, I knew we were going to get it done, but the timing was horrible. Yeah. Anyways, it's not that guy's fault, right? I had no right to look at my brother that way. You're not alone. <laughs> what is that noise? I keep hearing that. My, okay, my son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. I don't know about you guys, but my mother is precious. Mother's Day is what, next Sunday? Yeah. Where would we be without mothers? Okay? I think that, that women are the greatest blessing on this planet. Amen. And animals. I love animals. <laughs> women and animals. Can you imagine what this place would be like without women and animals? It would be a horrible place to live. It would be horrible. I wouldn't want to be here. I mean, it would be cool for a couple days, but that's it. I'm done. 
you know, it's just like sneezing. Sneezing's fun the first three times. When you start hitting number four and five, it's like, I'm done with this. <laughs> it's over. Please stop. Anyway, I, I want to talk to you about this lady that I met. I was at Publix up in Daytona. And I'm going through her line, and she could just see that she was really bummed. She was having a, just a bad day. And I could tell things were bad. And I said to her, I says, why are you, why are you so, you know, you look like you're not having a great day. I says, you should be happy. She's like, well, what are you talking about? I says, well, first of all, you're a woman. You're probably a mother, right? Yeah. I says, well, hey, ladies got it going on. I says, you see old men, sometimes they get retired. They don't know who they are. They walk around all bummed out. You know, but you never see the ladies have an identity crisis. That's what I told us. There was nobody behind me, so if you guys think I'm just here, you know, people are getting mad. There was nobody there, okay? So I said to her, I said, you should be, you should be happy because you're never going to have that problem. And I said, you want to know why? And she says, yeah, why? I said, because you ask a man who he is, he's going to tell you, well, I'm an electrician, I'm a carpenter, I'm a truck driver, I'm a singer. He's going to tell you what he does, right? But when you ask a woman who she is, I don't care if she's the CEO of a million dollar corporation. You know what she's going to say? She's going to say, I'm my kid's mom. That's who she is. That's a beautiful thing. You know, I saw that woman light up like a Christmas tree. I mean, she was glowing. When I left her, she was like, you have made my day. I said, God bless you, sister. Never forget it. And I left. That's the first time I ever seen that woman in the Publix. I suppose I'll see her again because she wasn't, she didn't work for the place. But I thought that was beautiful. So I had this horrible moment with this guy and a good moment with this gal, right? So in most of the religions in the world, I'm here, right? The balance is, is this, right? Isn't that what they say? Do more good than evil, and you're going to what? Where's the truth say? Yeah. Listen, if you lied once, you're a liar. If you've stolen something, look at Jesus. If you stole, if you thought about stealing something, you're a thief. Right? And God accepts only absolute perfection. Absolute perfection is only found in Jesus Christ. Yes. That's it, brothers and sisters. And we're here today to lift him up. To lift him up. You know, sometimes it's good to learn what God hates so that we can not do it. You know, and I'm not worried about not doing what God hates because I'm thinking that God's going to destroy me. I'm not worried about God destroying me. I'm worried about God not being happy with my decisions. You know? I don't want God's frown on my life. Amen. I want to smile. I want to know that what I'm doing is what I should be doing. What I'm thinking, what I'm saying, where I'm going, who I'm with. I want it to be a divine appointment. You know, Jesus didn't do anything, anything that was not a divine appointment. Amen. Think about that. How wonderful to have a life where people are hunting you down like a dog. And you can say, you know what? I don't care because it's not my time. He knew it was not his time. How did he know? How did he know? Did he have any advantage that you don't have? No. He did, but he never used it. <laughs> he did, but he never used it. And that's an even greater possibility than you could ever imagine. That's out of the realm of our possibility. That's why the Bible can say, in all ways he was tempted like if we are, yet way beyond. Are you kidding me? Think about it. If any one of you had that kind of power, would you use it? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> he said, nope. I do the Father's will. Amen. That's amazing testimony. Amen. Amazing testimony. Bind them continually upon thy heart and tie them about thy neck. Mm. When thou goest, it shall lead thee, and when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, 
it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are what? The ways of life. The way of life. Hmm. So the way to win may be through the way of life. Huh? In Isaiah 1 and 18, God says, let us come together. Let us reason, right? Reason together. Do we really come to the table thinking that we know anything? Because if we do, we can't learn anything. Because we already think we know something. That's why children are so wonderful. Because their attitudes are so fresh and clean. And they, they don't believe they know. So they come to the meeting thirsty. That's why their minds grow so quickly. But us, how do we do it? We get filled up, don't we? We get filled up because we think we know something. When we come before God, we ought to be empty in agreement with God. Saying, look, <laughs> I come to you as a little child. I don't know anything. Help me, Lord. You think God would bless that? You think he would appreciate that? I do. I do very much. Mm -hmm. Psalm 46.10 says what? Be still. Be still. And know that I am God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Proverbs. So we're right here, so let's just turn to 16. Proverbs 16. In verse 3, Proverbs 16 and verse 3. <clears throat> Commit thy works unto the Lord, and what? Thy thoughts shall be established. Ooh. Here's the big key right here. And this is a giant key that opens a difficult door. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Did I fall out? That's what Jesus did. <laughs> he fell out, huh? <laughs> so, he committed his works to the Lord. Amen. He committed his works. It's a major key right there. If you, if you don't hear anything else I hear, I say today, please. Boom. There it is. Okay, um, let's go to verse 7. Verse 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh what? Even his enemies to be at peace with him. Think about that. That's huge. That is, that's off the charts. You know, because if you're living the life that God has called you to live, you're probably going to create some enemies. <laughs> you know? And I gotta I gotta believe that these meetings that we're gonna have, the devil is gonna throw some stumbling blocks. You think? Let us not be part of any of the stumbling blocks. Amen. Let us turn to Psalms. A little bit left. Psalm 51. Psalm of David, right? Psalm 51 and 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. How do we accomplish this? By being in agreement with God of the things he says, right? The Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked, okay? So if we have a desperately wicked heart, then we can't fix it, right? We can't be fixed. The Bible says it has to be crucified, right? Can we do that? Turn back in Psalms to 34. 
Psalm 34. I want to start in verse 7. <clears throat> Psalm 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Hmm. What kind of fear are we talking about? Are we terrified? Kind of fear? Ah, a holy awe, a respect for God. That you don't want to go the wrong way because you don't want to see him have disfavor in your your choices. Correct? It's not that you're worried he's going to destroy you. And what is he promising there? Is there a promise in that? Deliver. Delivering you. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. No want. Do you have want? Have you been in want? Think about Paul being chained in a dungeon, singing hymns. Can you do that in a place like that? You reckon that was a divine appointment for Paul? Yeah. I think so. We got to come to the place where Paul was. We have to come to the place where Jesus was. Let us go into 17. 34 and 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Did we hear deliverance three times in the same chapter? You think God's trying to say something to you? Hello? He's trying to say something to you. You know, this pride thing makes our walk much more difficult than it should be. Because we actually, we think we can do something. We really do. <laughs> we ought to just surrender and let God deal with it. Right? Let us turn to 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 1. Chapter 1 and verse 30. Spirit, didn't he? 
That's how he knew. And he's, he's telling us that we can know all the things that he knew through the same access. Through the same access. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have, re we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Amen? Amen? Which things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. What is that telling us? Be less carnal, more spiritual. Allow the Lord to lead through his agency. The Holy Spirit, whom he's given us, the Bible said, is closer than a brother could possibly be. And I want to tell you, Ricky, brother, I appreciate you. I do. I could have never got that stuff done yesterday without your help. And I'm telling you, this man, is, he's a hammer. I, I, I don't know how this guy is so tough. I did not as much as he did, all right, because he's been doing this for days. I, I just got in one, one solid full day. And I was so tired last night. When I went to wash my feet in the shower, I was black. <laughs> I mean, I, I picked my foot up to wash my feet in the shower, and I couldn't even stand up. My legs were shaking. The soap and the soft water, I thought I was going to crack my coconut. I said, you, got, you, got, you can't do this, Ray. you got to sit down. So I had to sit down to wash my feet. I felt like a real old man. I said, wow. And I'm just thinking to myself, Ricky, how do you do this, man? He's a tough guy. If you're going to fight with this guy, you better have a lot to tank. <laughs> Anyways. So, but he that is spiritual, verse 15, judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But what does it say? But we have the mind of Christ. How do we have the mind of Christ? Through submission. Through submission to His Holy Spirit. Allowing Him to lead our lives. And that's going to be the victory. You know, we talked a little bit about it. Um, B brought it up in Sabbath school. You know, the scribes and the Pharisees hated Jesus. They said, well, we know who our Father is, but you're basically, I don't want to use that word, um, Illegitimate. Thank you, sir. Um, so if you don't believe in Jesus, right, you've only got one decision. You have to hate him. Right? Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or very God. Hallelujah. There is no Mary. There is no middle ground. Amen. Period. And they chose to disbelieve and hate him. Jesus is going to have a people at the end of time. He will have a people that represent Jesus the way we're supposed to. God has promised it. And when he has that people, just like the scribes and the Pharisees of the days of old, they are either going to believe and love and come into the fold, or they are going to hate and want to destroy these people. Right? Amen. And at that moment, every decision will have been made. Right. And Jesus stands up, and it's over. He can say, every decision has been made for or against the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what's going to end this thing, brothers and sisters. It's that simple. Everybody thinks we're waiting for Jesus. Jesus is waiting for us. I want to read you something. This comes from uh, 
Bible Commentary, Volume 6. <clears throat> man, fallen man, may be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Where's the battle? Mind. mind. So he can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How does he prove this? By the Holy Spirit taking possession of his mind, spirit, heart, and character. Amen. Where does this...